Hey everyone, this is Kerbin. I bring you another game from our case tourney over at Project CGC over the weekend. Uh, so this match is going to be actually from Top Cut. This is going to be the first round of Top Cut. Uh, on the left, we have Jimmy playing Minerva, one of the new ride lines from BT8. Obviously, the namesake of the set, Minerva Rising. Uh, and on the right, we have the sacking champion, Joshua Rodriguez, my teammate. Uh, playing the youth bird that he used to kill me in the last episode. Uh, anyways, uh, just going to be going into this match. All right, so getting into the actual match, looks like Minerva is going to be starting off. Uh, kind of a good position for Minerva. You do honestly probably want to be going first with Minerva, uh, even though Minerva's skill actually can't trigger unless you're, uh, the restand, I mean, can't actually trigger unless your opponent is at grade three. Um, Minerva is a deck that is kind of struggling a little bit right now um i think that it definitely can uh compete if you have a good player piloting it and you do uh build the deck in a certain way uh but just for right now i think that minerva's main plays are honestly just kind of rushing the opponent down so that when you get to your grade three turn um and your opponent is a grade three and you're able to do that uh restanding you're actually able to push really uh hard and just like get those last three or two or three damage that you need in order to close out the game uh as we see here um we've got the ride line um looks like we're just gonna be getting a very simple swing and pass from youth um just taking the damage no triggers obviously uh going into the grade two turn we are going to be uh calling out that grade two card that we saw youth playing in the last match uh using the skill to actually call out a melissa and calling it to the front row because as you can see uh, Minerva at this point really does need to rush in order to kind of uh, get yourself to a game point where you want to be where you can like finish it in a single turn uh, and we're, we're obviously seeing that right here um, so we're actually going to be pushing back the Melissa and calling out a drilling angel uh, putting back a chamomile that we discarded off ride deck I believe uh, unfortunately not hitting off it but that's honestly not very important the real important part of this is just putting that chamomile back into the soul uh, which in case you don't know uh, chamomile is a bit of a newer card uh, it did come out in bt8 uh, basically when it gets soul blasted out just like the old chamomile you can counter blast one and call it um, so it does really open up your multi-attacking options however it is pretty cb heavy uh, as we're going to be seeing uh, just swing with the grade two swing with the uh chamomile actually hitting an ot there um it's not super impactful but it is still uh pretty terrible if you're the youth player especially since you get a critical trigger off that one drive check of the drilling angel uh so youth already at three damage going into this grade two turn uh especially considering the fact that you are going second you're in a really bad position at this point um looks like we're gonna be using calling off a schnizel off the grade one skill uh using its skill to counter blast one and actually fetching out a tempest um definitely not too bad uh that's probably gonna be your first grade three turn assuming you get there and you don't just die on this next uh grade three turn uh, which youth probably won't. I think if you're playing the deck right, you should be able to uh, at least live. Although, you know, OT is a pretty big swing in tempo, even though it wasn't as impactful this uh, last turn as it could have been. Um, actually calling out our own grade two of our own. I should probably learn what that card's uh, name is called, but, you know, it doesn't matter. We all know what it does. And if you don't, I'm here to tell you. Uh actually calling off a pg off the skill um the other two cards were probably triggers or pgs uh and a quick note about this grade two card it is actually a mandatory call or add uh you cannot choose up to one which is why we do see him actually calling that pg instead of deciding to whiff um because you actually can't whiff with that card uh you're not allowed to um <laughs> anyways just going into the combat so it looks like we are Basically trying to rush down the opponent's wing with that Schneisel, going to be hit with a double intercept, uh, clearing out the front row, which is not bad because honestly those are two cards, you just call them for their on play skill, so you really don't care um, once they're off board, and in fact you kind of want them off board so you can actually just call much better rear guards, because Minerva definitely does have much much better rear guards that it can be using than just the drilling angel on that grade two uh using the chamomile skill when it's ridden over uh putting two cards from the top five into the soul up to two five up to two from the top five and we are actually going to be seeing a minerva actually going into soul so normally it doesn't really matter 
um, you'd think, oh, that's just another Persona ride, you don't have it die. But in this case, Minerva actually cares because Minerva has the continuous skill um, where if you have a grade 3 regalia in your soul, it actually gives your entire front row an extra 5k, which is always going to be helping you hit magic numbers, especially when your opponent's still on grade 2, because that means you can just count, call out two um, grade twos and then they're swinging for 15 um, which is really nice magic numbers against a grade 2 vanguard and even if you do something like pushing the melissa up melissa is still swinging for 13 thanks to minerva's skill um we did see the skill of minerva actually checking the top card of the deck and deciding where it is we're actually gonna be leaving it on top and it looks like that card we left on top is going to be a draw trigger um so it looks like we are just going to be guarding that with our own OT. So both OTs out of the game already. Um, pretty unfortunate for you that you drew into it. Uh, but anyways, looks like we are going to be taking the Camille, which is probably swinging at 25, which is a really awkward number unless you have a front trigger um, to guard. And then just uh, guarding the uh, Melissa's attack with a 5k. So going into this next youth turn, you do really need to push um, as much as you can. You need to get basically farm up as many resources as you can you are already at four damage so unless you can really helm it up and get as many resources as possible as well as just like pushing as much damage as you can during this next turn um you're in a really bad situation uh looks like we are gonna be calling yet another pg uh off the youth school um if i had to guess those other two cards that could have been call targets are probably going to be um, triggers, which you definitely don't want to be calling. Um, there is always just a debate whether you want to call something if you hit really bad targets off Youthberry. I think most of the time it's probably worth it, um, depending on what you have in hand. I mean, even though those PGs are PGs out of deck, there's no way to get them back, and they're only 6Ks, uh, 6K is really just like always better than nothing. Um, even though in this situation we're going to see really weak numbers, it's going to be like a 19 Youthberg swing. Um, actually seeing that witch, which we would have preferred to have last turn, uh, Revolve farming into that Tempest. Uh, checking top two, uh, a Schneisel and a Trigger. So we are actually going to be able to bot deck that Chamomile, uh, which is pretty good because Chamomile, if it's in the drop zone, you can obviously just put it back with the Drilling Angel and you don't want it in Soul because it is a multi-attack option. Uh, anyways, just swing with that Schneisel, only for a 20k, so it's going to call out a 15k guard. Uh, swinging with the PG, which is only 14, uh, which is a really sad number, because uh, it's just going to be calling for a 5k guard. Looks like we are just going to be... Actually, it is a 19, my mistake, um, because Temp has given an extra 5k, so 19 is a pretty decent number. Uh, but still, uh, with the draw trigger, it's just going to be easily guarded for 23. Um, and then looks like we're just going to be guarding the Tempest Swing, uh, which does not have any drive checks because uh, we did not see a Witch that turn. Anyways, looks like Minerva is going to be going into this turn. going to try and finish it off. We've got 2 CB left, calling out that Grade 2. Um, checking top 3. Um, and actually getting a Cider off the top, which in this situation is actually pretty good. Um, because Cider, after she boosts, she can actually return herself to the hand, which pays for Minerva's cost, which... In case you don't know, Minerva actually does need to discard a Genesis card, um, which there are not a huge amount of, but there are definitely enough to um, make the deck viable. Uh, calling out an Angelica there, and then using Minerva's skill to Soul Blast the Melissa, and actually call itself back out. Because Melissa, when it's Soul Blasted, uh, just like Camille, can call itself out. However, it does have to go into the back row. Uh, so it looks like we're swinging with that Angelica for a nice 28. Thanks to the Persona Ride and the extra 5k that you get from Minerva, uh, which is a really good magic number. And then using the skill to Soul Blast 1, uh, slide itself into the soul and counter charge. And then using that Counter Blast right back up to call out the Camille that we Soul Blasted for Angelica's cost. So now we do have three more, or actually four more attacks with uh, Minerva's skill. So now we did see a defensive coming out of Youthberg. So he is at 23. So these are going to be a little bit easier to guard. However, I don't think we really farmed enough resources during that last turn uh, with the Tempest to the point where we can actually endure two Vanguard swings and three Rearguard swings. Uh, so we are in a pretty bad situation as a youth, youth player, uh, which is like what I was talking about earlier, where Minerva's win con is really to kind of just like push as much damage early as as possible so that when you get into that grade three turn where you can restand uh and you can swing four or five or six times 
um, that really you have that enough pressure to the point where they they can't really afford to even hit defensives, they can't afford to take any of the attacks, and they have to guard everything. So it looks like we are actually going to be no guarding this Vanguard swing, calculating that we don't have enough to actually uh, protect from the last couple of swings. Uh, and we do see a draw trigger and a heal trigger, uh, just putting more salt in the wound. But anyways, that is going to be the end of the match. I hope you guys enjoyed. Go ahead and remember to do all those YouTube things, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.